<sighs> so, the Sigma 28 to 70. I can probably sit here on this uh, uber long length analysis on why this lens is so great and why you should probably buy it, but I'll just outright say just buy it. It's a great lens. Uh, I've used it in a lot of different scenarios. I've used it from the Los Angeles National Forest to BMW events to, uh, yeah, just a lot. And I wanna show you in this video, the places that I've taken it, how I've used it, why I've used it, and uh, yeah, continue the recommendation. You don't have to wait to the end of the video to find out whether or not I like this lens. I mean, I'm using it right now to record this intro right now. And I'll just flat out say, buy the lens. Stick around to see why. So I have come down to the Los Angeles National Forest uh, to test out the Sigma 28 to 70, get some, get some nature shots in. So let's go ahead and uh, give that a try right now. So something that I actually found very interesting was how wide 28 could actually be. Um, I was not expecting 28 to be wide because obviously if you're coming from like, let's say a uh, 28 uh, to 70, which is what we're using right now, uh, it may feel normal. If we're, you know, used to using, let's say 24 to uh, 70, those four millimeters might make that, that big of a difference. However, um, Coming from someone who used to only shoot 85, 55, I honestly think that it's very, very good. Um, I feel like I am able to capture almost everything in the shot. I think 28 is great. Um, it's it's wide for me. I understand that for for you know people who are used to shooting you know larger landscapes and house interior shots or exterior shots, it may feel claustrophobic. This thing can actually focus pretty close. Another thing that um, I was also testing through my fidgeting was actually the continuous focus. I know that Sony does a really good job of uh, having uh, the focus really capture what's important what's what's supposed to be in frame and for the most part i haven't really felt like i've had too many issues uh with some photos i've had misses um so it's it's all it's all pretty interesting <laughs> to see but honestly it's it's pretty good so far so good so let's uh keep the ball rolling shall we so the first portion where i'm outside was around fall i kind of sat on it i really started thinking about where i wanted this video to go because it was nothing more than just talking about a lens. I don't want to take away from what I have already recorded because that's what I was feeling at the time. These were things that I was excited about and I still feel excited about them. So I want to make clear that, you know, my thoughts haven't changed. I still really recommend this lens. Um, although towards the end, you'll start to see one of my major concerns but for now you'll continue to see me using it like here in this next segment when i use it in more of an event space uh for photography and videography at the uh, bmw driving experience here in um, los angeles oh the main goal of today was to um use the Sigma 28 to 70 in an, you know, event experience where I thought it was really cool that, you know, everyone was super okay with me taking photos and videos. People were moving out of the way. Uh, I think that's the one thing that I'm not used to. I was really worried that that 28 was not going to be wide enough. Uh, I feel like that's what a lot of people have been saying. Um, I took this out to a car meet last week out in Laverne and honestly it wasn't wide enough not at all like I I can I can actually agree that it, it wasn't but I can show you the samples right now I can show you how everything is it was excuse me every car was so tightly packed but here at an event type of uh, facility they they had everything spaced out so well uh, most people were on their phones most people were just here to race the cars you can still hear the tires screeching 2.8 great However, the breathing, it, it just would breathe really, really awkward. 
And I, I had that all throughout the event. I, I went ahead and I reset my entire settings down to the picture profile and it, it still was breathing. I, I uh, swapped out SD cards and it, it... I'm using the backup SD card that writes at like 80 megabits per second. Like, oh man, dude, this is, this is hard, harder than I thought it was going to be. I mean, without the stabilization, it's not bad. It definitely isn't bad, but I do think it is integral if you plan on using lenses that don't have stabilization, even if you do have a camera with in-body stabilization. I also didn't buy this lens because I wanted another manual lens. Um, I did try it out with manual uh, focusing, but I I just, I can't get that down anymore. I got spoiled with autofocus. Um, I'll make it really, really brief. If you want a manual focusing lens, it's less expensive. It's a lot harder, but it definitely helped me learn uh, videography, photography, because I had to manually twist aperture. I had to consistently uh, twist the lens to make sure that I was uh, keeping in focus with my subject. And overall, yeah. With the Sigma 28 to 70, I was thinking to myself, coffee shop, it's going to be tight. There's going to be a lot of space. This one was pretty dimly lit only two or three ceiling lights and then just all natural lighting on the end. I came around noon, stayed until about 3 p.m. Overall, really great to shoot with. I, I was honestly surprised. Pretty good for the area that I was in. I thought that 28 and 35 were gonna be what I primarily shot and guess what? That is exactly what I primarily shot on. I definitely could see this being the greatest stepping stone past your your kit lens or if you're like me you never got a kit lens and you wanted to replace it or, or use in its place the 28 to 70. My time in Carbon Canyon has uh, come to a close and I think it's time for us to go back home. This one just happened a few days ago as of recording and I quickly realized that it's not a vlogging lens. I remember that I thought to myself 28 might be wide enough for, for a vlogging lens. It's not. It's 100% not. Um, your arm is tired. This lens is coming in at a pretty hefty weight on top of the cage I have combined with the uh, actual uh, camera. The weight is a lot on this, on this lens and like, I don't know why I thought that it would, it would be good because like my shoulders are burning, my arms are burning and I have it on a gorilla pod. It's shaky. If I were to just do one hand, look at this. It's it's not wide enough because then I would feel much more comfortable holding something like this close, but this is like super intimate and super like, it's weird. I think it's weird. I think it would need to be much wider than what it actually is. Like right here, I think it's fine, but it's not a vlogging lens. And I just want to get that across before we hit the final examination, my overall with this lens.
the price has fluctuated. Uh, when I first bought it, it was upwards of $800 to $900, and then it fell to about $700 to $800 with like pretty good packages, like SD cards and like bags and stuff. I just got like a terabyte and like a lens cap, and I was like, whoa, that's like the best thing I've ever seen. But uh, yeah. Overall, I love this lens. I still love this lens. I, I had it attached to everything that I did this year. And if you have any takeaways from this one video is once you find that one thing that you love, don't let go of it because it it's, it's supposed to treat you right, <laughs> which this lens has. So I was actually just editing, editing right now, completely just editing uh, the video project. And then I thought, oh wait, you know, I should also include like a montage of photos at the end. So I have Lightroom open and um, I caught something. So how I like to edit, I just click auto and then I'll go down to enable lens corrections and then boom, I like to see where I'm at with it, how it looks and then just keep editing from there. I noticed something when I hit enable lens corrections. Obviously there is some distortion on the lens because you know, you're, you're at a pretty wide focal length, even at like above 35, you'll still see some bubble in the, um, the lens that like fisheye look, but it's the corners. The corners are what actually took me off guard. Um, I didn't realize this until I was piling up all these photos. And, you know, I have a few more photos taken where, look, you can see all along the uh, corners of the photos, uh, it's a little bit darker than the rest. These photos were on film, but stuff like this like i didn't even i didn't even catch i didn't even catch that and that's like super i think that should be pretty important i know that this still isn't a review but i still like this lens i still think it's a great lens uh yes i i do have this issue right here but i i still think that it's pretty pretty worth it I know that there were a lot of issues when this uh, lens first released, pricing, uh, the fact that it was actually recalled uh, for issues with the uh, coating on the actual lens itself. And I think there might, there there's rumors of one more issue, but I don't wanna bring it up just because it's a rumor. Um, so yeah, I think that it's a fair price now. It's a much better price now. So if you're still interested in this lens, do be aware that on uh, photos, the corners do actually um, vignette. And I should have made that clear. Uh, you can't see that in my photos just because most of the time I, I just click enable lens corrections. But here I, I finally noticed it off of the uh, little corner uh, in this photo right here. But I mean, with that, I still want to show a montage of photos uh, that I have taken with this lens of this whole eight month experience. Thank you. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe, please comment um, to tell me what you would have seen. Like I said, I think in the beginning and like in the description and everywhere else, these aren't really reviews. These are experiences that I've had. And if I've used this lens for eight months virtually straight, I think that this, it's a pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good talking point. Thank you all for watching and um, see you on the next one. Damn.
Shit, I should be a cinematographer. Shit. So I wanted to shoot some photos, which I knew I could always edit in Lightroom and change out and, and upgrade and all this type of stuff. Did you hear that? <laughs> 